He is David Faraday of CBS Sports, joining me here again on The Rich Eisen Show. How are you, David? Hello, Richard. I'm very well, thank you. <laughs> so well, uh, where do we start first? Let's start with Dustin Johnson and your thoughts on that three-putt to wrap things up yesterday, David. Well, you know, it's, it's a hard heartbreaker. Um, it, it really is, Rich, especially when you consider that, that Dustin Johnson should have a major championship uh, at this point, too. He was uh, a victim of a, a, a really bad piece of judgment, in, in my view, at Whistling Straits. Uh, at the PGA Championship a few years ago, uh, where uh, you know he was deemed to be in a bunker, where he clearly wasn't. So uh, you know to have one taken away from him like that, and then to do that to yourself, um, he, he's got to be heartbroken this morning. But he's the sort of player. I mean, he'll have his name on more than one by the time he's done. He's so talented. What do you make of the criticism he's received for not showing up to the uh, to the post tournament um, trophy ceremony, David? Well, it, obviously, you'd like to see him there, but uh, it's I'd, I'd be a, a little slower to criticize someone. You know, you have to be in that position to know how you're going to feel, and, and you wouldn't wish it on anyone. David Faraday joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show of uh, CBS Sports and also uh, his talk show, Faraday, on the Golf Channel, uh, joining me here on, on the program. So where do you place Spieth's 2015 season in the Pantheon, David? Oh, so far, so good. I think you'd have to say um, he, when he won at the Masters, uh, it was a, just a phenomenal performance. And, and when you consider the conditions under which they played this last week, uh, it's an indication, I think, that Jordan Spieth can win anything, anywhere. Um, he, he is that good. Uh, and to have such a wonderful kid be in this position, having won the first two majors of the year, it, it really puts golf in a great place. So wh how much better can he get? What, what is he working on, David, that Jordan needs to maybe uh, polish up a little bit more as a 21-year-old? Doesn't seem to be too much. Well, I think his strength is that he has no weaknesses. I'm pretty sure I've said that somewhere before. <laughs> um, unlike myself, as my uh, weaknesses, I have no strength. But um, he, he he's really working on Rory McIlroy. He, that's, the, uh, that's the goal, is to get to number one in the world. And... Um, Rory McIlroy is a different player. Uh, Jordan Spieth, I think, looks much more workmanlike, a kind of a technical, put it in the right place, leave it under the hole, that kind of thing. Whereas Rory is is got something so free flowing and uh, it's uh, beautiful to watch. But uh, it's a fascinating thought, you know, the two of them going at it head to head. See, yeah, I mean, are, is this a media creation, or or are they really when they are on the course together? thinking about the other one and or trying to start a rivalry because they know that they are uh, one and two in the world? Well, I, I think it's, um, I mean, they are thinking about each other uh, at this point. You know, Rory would like to stay in front and, and, and Jordan needs to get there. But I, I think it's made all the more remarkable by the fact that it's so difficult these days to have a rivalry because these kids are just so good and there's so many of them. Uh, we, we've seen it in, in recent years, you know, winning major championships. Um, there, there are names that, that perhaps we think, we, you know, we're not that familiar with them. Um, but th that's the way it's going to be. Uh, it, they're just so good, and, and there are so many of them. Uh, tournaments, and especially major championships, are much more difficult to win than they used to be. David Faraday joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show. Now let's get into the Chambers Bay of it all, David. Where, where did, aye, aye, aye. <laughs> I was going to ask you where you stood on the course uh, and, and its conditions, but I guess I just, uh, I just learned that, huh? Well, I'll tell you, um, I, I've not been there, and uh, I know as much about the golf course as anyone else who hasn't been there, but i got to tell you, um, I had my wife call Direct TV uh, when I first saw because I thought there was something wrong with the picture. Um, it, it looked uh, post-apocalyptic to me, uh, as if a nuclear bomb had gone off nearby. Um, the, no matter what you know, they said, you know, the USGA said about uh, the condition of the golf course, uh, the, the greens were horrific uh, and not of the standard that uh, we, we expect at the U.S. Open. Uh, and I don't know why, because uh, th there was one green out there, at least one that, that was had been resurfaced uh, and looked like it was all fescue and looked very good. Uh, and I, I don't know why they wouldn't have done all of them like that, because when that Poa Annua gets in there and the golf course is as dry as it is, I mean, it looked like the, the produce section at, at Kroger. And how how damaging is it to the brand of the USGA? 
David? Well, I, I, I don't think it does any long-term damage. Uh, you know, the, the golf course itself, I thought, was very interesting. Um, it, also, it's an, an interesting choice of venue because when we have, we've had two British Opens this year, or uh, we will have. <laughs> yes, right. Um, that's basically what it looked like. Uh, it's an extremely unusual golf course for here. I've never seen a golf course with, with uh, that fescue and that impoverished soil that the place so firm. Uh, it's just got British Open written all over it. So um, would you, because there's already talk of maybe going back to Chambers Bay uh, at, at 10 years from now. Uh, obviously, lots can happen between now and then. Because Ian Poulter also said, uh, David, that uh, if this was a regular tournament, players would have protested and left. And they can't do that for a U.S. Open. Do you think there would be some form of a player uprising if they uh, USGA decided to go back to Chambers Bay? Well, I, I think it would depend very much on the condition of the golf course. Uh, if, if they can get those greens to where they are, Fescue, um, or even if they can get them to where they're all POA, uh, just a, and even at the surface a little bit, uh, you, you know. The bottom line is it's it's the same for everybody. Um, but having said that, you, you you do like to see you know great conditions uh, in a major championship. Um, and, and and again, you know, to see Jordan come to the top like that, to to stay in contention all week and and just to get his nose in front. And people are going to say, well, it was handed to him because Dustin three putted the last. That's not that's not so. You hang up a number. And you wait to see if anybody can beat it. And if they can't, well, then you won it. And it wouldn't matter if Dustin had three putt of the, the 18th or three putt of the first. That's that's just the way golf is. So, what do you think Spieth's chances on the old course to make it three for three for majors is? Boy, David? I think he's got a great chance, Rich. I really do. Um, I, I also think Rory has got a great chance of being in there at the finish as well. St Andrews is is a golf course that that you can get on top of it if you drive the ball well. And uh, Rory McIlroy is the is the greatest driver of the golf ball that's ever lived. I've never seen anything like it. Uh, and, uh, but again, you know, St. Andrews is wide open, uh, except when they put the flags away. And, and then there's about a 25-yard strip on every hole that you need to be in if you're going to get close to it. Um, and, and that suits Jordan's game down, down to a team. I mean, it, it's perfect for him as well. So it's really, uh, I think, the anticipation of the British Open is going to be phenomenal. CBS Sports golf analyst David Faraday, last question for you. You're shooting your, your golf channel show down there in Alabama, David? Yeah, well, actually, I'm not in Alabama. I've got Nick Saban here, and I'm somewhere in Georgia. Okay. I, I don't know where I am. Uh, Waterfall is the name of the, the country club, the golf course, and it's spectacular. But if I go out on the porch here at the clubhouse, I can hear banjos playing, and I thought I heard a pig squeal. Oh, oh no. <laughs> Yes. Wow, Nick Saban. So he'd probably be the Burt Reynolds character, hopefully, in, uh, <laughs> in Deliverance. I hope the two of us survive this. No, it's a, it's a beautiful place. Absolutely gorgeous. So you're, Nick's, uh, Nick's a player, is he, David? He loves to play. Loves to play. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And how are the greens there? Are there are there are the greens surfaces They're appropriate so for, for Nick? Okay. Yeah, the players would wish they had them. Okay. Um, at Chambers Bay, that's for sure. Before I let you go, here's the poll question, richeisenshow.com. Ask it to uh, David Faraday, Chris Brockman, please. All right, David, who's going to finish their career with more major championship victories, Spieth, McElroy, or Tiger Woods? What do you think? Oh, wow. Tiger Woods. You know, it, 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 uh, that, people have forgotten, Chris, you know, what, uh, what Tiger Woods did. I was there for that 10 or 11 year stretch from 2007 or 97 to 2008. And, and when he played well, nobody else won. And I'm no player I've ever seen is capable of what he did. Uh, my children won't see it. Their children probably won't see it. And to get to 14 in this day and age, absolutely astonishing. David, thanks for taking the time. Appreciate it. My pleasure, anytime. I appreciate that. That's uh, David Faraday. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern. On Audience.